How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student, and today we're going to be talking about the prevalence of type 1 diabetes among transgender people. I know that's something that's really not talked about at all, but this has been inspired by my friend Oak, who is also another trans medical student, and they have type 1 diabetes. So I did my research on this. Oaks also published a book about their experiences being trans and having type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes so I'll, I'll provide a link to that below but let let's talk about this because this is going to be a little bit of a whirlwind for most people so a little bit of a background on type 1 diabetes versus type 2 diabetes so there's a pretty clear differences between the two we know for a fact that type 2 diabetes which is the type of diabetes that most people get when they're adults results from insulin resistance. That means when uh, we follow a Western high sugar diet, our pancreas secretes more and more insulin, and then we develop insulin resistance leading to type 2 diabetes. But type 1 diabetes is often someone who is much, much younger, usually a child is diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And a lot of people don't really know the origin of like scientists in general, we don't know what causes type 1 diabetes. All we know is that type 1 diabetes is the result of an autoimmune destruction of our pancreatic islet cells, which secrete insulin. And there has been a couple of theories, and one of the theories is increased stressors on the body. Another huge difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes is the fact that type 2 diabetes has been linked evidently to certain genetic predispositions. So my family actually has a huge, huge number of type 2 diabetics. So my mom was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. My grandmothers on both my paternal and maternal side were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So when I was younger, I actually was pre-diabetic for a little bit and that scared me so i started adopting a low sugar diet and that has kept my a1c levels which checks my blood sugar levels over three months pretty low so i haven't gone to a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes and hopefully i won't ever reach there but there are strong genetic components to type 2 diabetes type 1 diabetes on the other hand we don't see that much of a strong link in genetics and type 1 diabetes as well. So now that we know the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes, what is the link between type 1 diabetes and trans people? Because I did a little bit of research on this and trans people are at an increased risk of type 1 diabetes. The prevalence of trans people with type 1 diabetes is much higher than the regular cisgender population. But caveat, there are less than uh, there's only like a couple of studies out there looking at the similarities and link between type 1 diabetes and being trans. So take some of the evidence that's here with a grain of salt because more research needs to be done. And I want to emphasize if you are a scientist out there watching this video, please, please, please look into this link because this is, this is good science and this is something that we should be aware of as trans people and it will make trans care better. And of course, the two big studies that I am going to talk about and the statistics I'm going to tell you in this video, links to them are going to be in the description. If you want to read them, I'll put the DOI link there and you will know the ways to get them for free if you have those means. So first, the first study I'm going to look at is a 2019 study that looked at the prevalence of type 1 diabetes among those diagnosed with gender dysphoria and those that were not diagnosed with gender dysphoria. And they found that people with gender dysphoria had a 9.4 fold higher prevalence of type 1 diabetes than the non-gender dysphoric group, which is insane. That's a huge number compared to the average population, which is about three people per 1,000 with type one diabetes. They saw almost 25 people per 1,000 individuals with type one diabetes in the gender dysphoric group. And some caveats here are that this study had a much, much smaller trans population. They had about 315 
trans people enrolled in the study versus 70,000 cisgender people that were studied in the um, methods. So they didn't have that big of a population of trans people. Also, it mostly looked at people who are adolescents between the ages of 10 to 21. So there are some confounding variables here. Also, uh, almost all the data that was taken was from the University of Wisconsin Health System. So it might not be attributable uh, nationwide or even globally. But um, the fact that the the magnitude was that high is is insane and it, it it does it does raise a lot a lot of questions another study published in 2021 by a bunch of researchers over at boston children's hospital uh, mind you a much much smaller study still showed a five-fold increase in transgender youth with type 1 diabetes as compared to the general population so uh, even though this study was smaller, they found a very, very similar, similar, drastically higher prevalence of type 1 diabetes among their trans youth versus the non-trans youth. I do appreciate that both of these studies did talk about the large limitations they had and the limited resources they had to do studies like this because usually for really large statistically significant diabetic studies you need a lot of money and you need a big sample size and unfortunately um, the researchers in both studies didn't have a lot of resources to do something like that but i do appreciate that they are trying to trying to understand something that hasn't been understood before and i hope this encourages future diabetic researchers to look into this because these extremely large prevalence among trans youth it's it's pretty concerning and you know the both both studies looked at why is this the case because they tried to ponder i mean they couldn't really come towards the cause but they tried to ponder on the risks of gender dysphoria when it comes to environmental stressors leading to physical manifestations so like I've said before in the beginning of this, one of the theories of type 1 diabetes on why it happens is that people, kids who get it, uh, experience some sort of hard stress in their life, which leads them to creating antibodies against their own pancreases. So if we think about kids with really bad gender dysphoria, they're going through a lot of stress in a very pivotal times in their lives when they're trying to figure out who they are they're trying to uh, create their own sense of identity when society as a whole doesn't really want to ex accept them and they might have parents that are disapproving of their gender identity so it, it says a lot about how uh, currently there's so many laws being proposed throughout the country on limiting trans kids access to gender affirming care but when we limit these health access needs for trans kids we create even more stress in their lives and it just it doesn't just cause mental consequences it causes long-term physical consequences once you have the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes it's an incurable illness you'll be dependent on medication for the rest of your life. And um, I'm also a proponent of um, disability rights, so I don't necessarily think having type 1 diabetes is a bad thing. It's something that can be managed and something that needs resources from all sorts of government societal institutions. But at the same time, if we can prevent this, why don't we? Anyways, I am gonna get off my soapbox, my little social justice soapbox right there, but I hope you found this video interesting, I hope you found it entertaining, and I hope you got something out of it, and I hope that you'll share it with someone who might benefit from this information, because I definitely, it blew my mind when I saw those statistics, because it's, 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 it's pretty, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, 
it makes it makes my heart clench a little bit but anyways thank you all for watching this video please follow me on instagram and twitter to keep up with my daily life shenanigans and the advocacy work i do and i'll see you all in the next video this is Ben.